Today I'm gonna be showing you the inside of the Giant Twist battery pack. I might have done something similar before in the YouTube channel, but I don't think I've done a demounting. These are really old battery packs. The first time I saw them I thought they were lead acid because they had such a strange design. And they sit on the back of the bike. You have one battery on each side of uh, the paketholare. Really strange, but I really like this battery and I believe that Sanyo is the one manufacturing them. Uh, it says it has Sanyo Lion battery, but I believe Sanyo is actually manufacturing these battery packs or the were manufacturing these battery packs directly for Giant, not just someone using Sanyo cell, but um, Sanyo themselves. Because Panasonic has dabbled in the battery pack industry and quit, and Sanyo also did that, and apparently they quit. I, I don't, haven't heard anyone, uh, any rumors that Panasonic or Sanyo are building their own battery pack with their own cells. At least not that I know of, but I believe this is done by Sanyo and they have a really weird way of building these battery packs. How to open this? There are four screws over here, standard standard screws, no problem. Uh, but they have these locking mechanisms and then I'm using my favorite tool, the Spackles body. Not the waveable at the Kia. And you just click, click. And there are LiPo version of these ones. I don't like the LiPo version, but they exist. And I don't think you can tell it from the outside. But this is the 18650 kind, and I've already opened it. So, boohoo. Click. And you do not want to lose this handle, because the customer will get mad. So save this in a good storing place. And here you have the inside, most likely ABS plastic. And here you can see the whole battery pack is enclosed, not in heat shrink tubing, but a plastic bag. And this looks like the plastic bags you get when you buy a um, wine bottle or you get a wine bottle as a gift. You can put them in these kind of plastic bags. I think these look exactly the same. And they're using this to protect against water and it's actually extremely good to protect against water. You don't need to have heat shrink tubing. This one is folded and glued in the bottom and on the top it's uh, twisted and folded and, and a lot of silicone over here. So it's just impossible, impossible to water to get in. And I also like that it's transparent so you can actually see. This is a example of a very strange but very well built battery pack that will last you a long time. And they're not cheap assets, they are using 5P so that the customer is getting at least 10 amp hours because that was uh, 26 volt 9 amp hours. But still, most ones using um, 8650s back then were using 4P that, that you get like 6 to, to 8 amp hours. So I really like this cool design, but it's almost impossible to replicate without these nickel strips. You will have to cut special nickel strips like like eight of them for each of each of these rules. You should not use more than one nickel strip for each show. But here you have to do like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten individual nickel strips. So I will not be using this holder because that that also limits me to the number of cells. I could only do 17.5 at the max with modern cells. But I'm gonna transfer this battery into 25 amp hours. Because apparently Giant makes good electric bicycles. Oh, even though they were not that popular in Sweden. Uh, they, they are apparently very good. So the customers almost always choose the highest capacity. And I can offer them 25 amp hours. That makes them one of the biggest 24 volt batteries in the world for standard 250 watt e-bikes. I'm gonna open this up. This one is not that sharp, but... Um, And a charging fuse that is not put inside over here, but on the outside so you can easily change it. It's a 5 amps micro fuse. I think this is the micro kind. I don't have that in stock, but they don't usually break. Now, you disconnect the charging port and as you can see they're using 4 wires for charging. 
the problem is that when I change all the cells, I change the BMS because I really don't work with this kind of BMSs. So then you need to change the charging port and the charger. The original charger need to have these extra signal wires to work properly. So you have to add the cost of a charger when you replace everything in this battery pack. But there is no problem because you see the discharging port is just two pins. And there are another version of this battery pack where they added, they actually have four, four pins available here, available. So one of the packs, they're adding a red wire to over here, over here, but it's not used for anything that I can tell. Uh, it might be a smart battery pack and it's used for signaling or some kind, but in every single time I work with these battery packs, uh, I have been able to change the BMS and everything on the inside and it still works, except you have to change the charger. So don't worry about the discharging port. It will be fine even if it has an extra red wire. And I also think um, this is pretty cool. I have a special place for the, the special fuse. And you can only put this one in one way. And it looks kind of strange. It looks like you've done something wrong, haven't you? Ah. Because this one is not aligned with the bottom. It just goes in a little bit, but that's alright. That's how it's supposed to be. And if you can try and pry it in the other way. You see, it won't uh, go all the way down here. And you put, can't put the cap back on, so that's good. That's not something you see in every battery pack, but should be there. You can only put this one in, in the right direction. And here is something I do not understand why there are brown spots on these cables. Every like five centimeters. Maybe you can tell me why they add brown spots. Are they checking the wire or what are they for? And anyway, this special fuse, I don't know what it's called. So this one I can't replace. 40 amp fuse for a maximum 10 amp battery. So it's over overkill. And it, of course it doesn't matter which way you put this one in because it's a fuse. It's bi-directional, yay. Okay, they actually have small black marks on the threads here, meaning that most likely some human are checking each one of these screw holes before building before. I also check these ones. They actually do a very good job on these cases, which is why I like to show them to you. Oh. They're very difficult to repair, almost impossible if you use the original holders and the original BMS. But the only down function is that you have to replace the charger. So if you also get a good vendor for chargers, there's no problem. Here you can see this wine bottle bag as I call them. They have padding on one side. Here it says Sanyu. I can't prove that Sanyu is actually the manufacturer of this but they're using Sanyu cells. And there are a lot of features on this battery pack that I'm gonna show you and it's built not like any other battery pack I've seen. And when I've seen similar battery pack, because Panasonic had a 36 volt version that looks almost exactly the same uh, when it comes to the connection and these little metal plates and everything. So I believe that pack was built by Sanyo for Panasonic for the German market for a 36 volt battery. They are screwed together and they are using the same plate for the positive for the negative as to do for the positive. So they only have to ma manufacture one of these. And for some strange reason, they didn't add the <laughs> positive and negative. Uh, so even though they come from the same positive line, they didn't add them together. They made a special one over here for the charging positive. But for the negative, they only have one that goes to the BMS. You're gonna be using your screwdriver a lot. And there are different sizes on these, so make sure not to strip them. You hear that? That's not a good sound. I'm using the wrong kind here. You're gonna have to use the really sharp kind. There you go. Now we have no power to the BMS, at least um, from this one. And they have dual temp sensors. They have this black one over here, which is very difficult to remove because it's uh, between two cells and it's a lot of silicone. So 
in most cases you can't just yank it out because they're using very tough silicone. And this other one around here is one of the coolest temp sensors I've seen. Now I've done a video on this, I don't know if it's the English or the Swedish channel, but these are two metal wires with a thin isolating twisted together and then they taped it around the cell. Now this isolating layer, the isolating layers, they melt at a set temperature. They melt at maybe 50 degrees or 70 degrees. So when uh, these um, isolating layers melt, then the wires touch each other and it's giving a signal to the BMS to stop. Which is actually pretty cool. Because anywhere on this battery pack where the cells on the top here gets like 70 degrees, it will melt and these wires will most likely connect to each other since they are twisted together and it will stop the BMS from charging and discharging. It's like a permanent temp fuse. And the cool thing is that that is just not connected to one little part of the battery. It actually goes all the way around the battery up over here. So that's actually pretty cool. It's not resettable. So if you, <laughs> for some reason, if you're in India or Africa, someplace really hot, and this one goes out, you can't really do much about it. Here are the individual wires. Uh, they are not twisted over here, but they are connected to this one. This is actually really cool and haven't seen anything similar in any other battery packs. But we won't be reusing that one, but of course you can if you like. Let's go over to the positive ones. And I'm not gonna be keeping any of these screws. So, so we're just getting started. And here you can see they have metal pins coming out of uh, the battery. They go down here to a connection plate and then they have another one of these wires to another connection plate. And then they are soldered over here. And I would guess these are manual solders. These spot weldings looks excellent. This must be made in a machine, but the soldering over here is probably done by a human. And yes, you can see they check every single one of these connection, which is good when most of the batteries pack is built by a machine, which can uh, miss something. And I'm gonna do like this and just cut them open because I'm not gonna desolder them. You can try and desolder them, but then you're gonna have to do this, go down this rabbit hole by adding 10 different nickel strips or some way twisting a very long nickel strips every time in every corner. I'm not gonna be doing that. It, it looks pretty cool, like four snakes laying over here, but it's hard to work with. So we're just gonna snip, 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 snip. And over here as well. Now, the BMS has absolutely no power to the battery pack. I don't think we can remove it yet because there are like so many different screws in here. And some of them you have to do manually. This one I think is holding the BMS in place. Yeah, four of them. Let's see. Nice. Now the only thing holding it together is this temp sensor, which is just stuck between the cells and now I accidentally broke it uh, but no problem uh, I'm not gonna be yeah I think it's really fun taking this apart uh, removing the nickel strips because usually I can break it off in one piece almost it's very satisfying removing the nickel strips on this one and for some reason this plate is screwed in to the plastic case why why do you okay they're screwed into this one actually with four screws so that's what they're for they don't have a permanent connection between these ones and the nickel plates but they have four three screws this one is not connected to that nickel plate 
Now I, I don't have anything that goes all the way down here so I usually do them manually and I always 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 forget one of them. And you don't need to do this until you actually remove all the nickel. Actually should, you should be able to pry this one off. I don't think I have tried that because no none of the, no none of the nickel is going over this plastic case. There's always some screws hiding. Uh, I think that actually might be screw holes under the nickel. So but I'm going to show you how to demount this one. I think this is pretty fun. More fun than other battery packs. And now you usually can't get a hole strip unless you're very careful. So don't plan on reusing this one. Look, look, they're still good enough not to loosen on their own, but still good enough so you can remove them in one piece. Of course, there's gonna be some scratches on them. And since this is a really weird configuration, I'm gonna do the ones on the edges first. And you can short circuit them if you're not careful. Yeah, it's probably possible to if you're really careful reuse these ones and I'm gonna have a plier just mount them up <laughs> oh it's not gonna look any good but you could probably reuse them if you really wanted to but don't skimp out on nickel these are most likely 0 0.15 millimeters in width no in thickness Look at that, almost one more. And they have this uh, green Sanyusel. And as always, it's always impossible <laughs> to read anything on Sanyusels. Here you can actually see a part of a date code, 650Y. Yeah, now we've done these ones. Now we wanna do the outer ones on this side. What I really like that there is almost no nickel left on these, uh, on the tops or the bottom part. Mostly because if it's a little bit thicker nickel, thicker nickel, thicker nickel, so it doesn't tear when you pry them off. So it's easy to test and reuse the cells, but none of these will be over two amp hours because they weren't even that when new. Since the pack is just nine, then this one would be like, look at that. Metal snake coming through. Now you have these two and these two. Now you can short circuit any of the ones in the outer place. Look at that, two more to go. Then the fun is over, sorry. But you can always rewatch the video where I'm removing this nickel if you find it as satisfying as I do. I watch a lot of repair videos from Rossman Group and I really love when he is desoldering and adding new micro components to boards. I find that very satisfying that he can on a microscopic le level replace parts that are water damaged or burned and one thing I found completely amazing is when he resolders ship that has like 16 solar balls or even more on the bottom side and he's just using hot air and everything just flows into place that is just so satisfying oh really like the sound like Look at that, isn't it beautiful? Now there's nothing that can short circuit. Short circuit. Oh. 
this one is completely loose. And the last one. Perfect connection between the nickel and the cells. So it won't shake loose, but it can easily be removed by a repair man or repair woman. Ta da! Let's see if we can remove this one now. Usually, there some pressure as well and missing screws did we have anything more under the nickel yes we have at least one opening over here just gonna stop us from taking it apart you can feel it loosening wow look at those holders 43 43 43 43 43, 43. And almost no nickel left. Oh, almost all of them. These ones are the one with the temp sensors. And um, I de screw these ones so I can recycle this as plastic and this as metal. And these ones are gonna be a bit tricky to remove. And here you can actually see the writing on the cell. You can't because uh, it's not printed, it's embossed. You are RT 18650 Y. Yeah, you, you really want to remove them. I usually use this um, this tool to remove some of the silicone. And you don't want to puncture the cells, but you can already see one is loose. Yeah. And the other one, ow. Yeah, there are sharp corners here you can usually twist. Oh, finally, finally, and here we have 35 Sanyo Y cells, date code Q27G.